this module, we will examine some typical fire and sound rated floor ceiling systems and how they perform, and also what measures can be taken to improve the performance of these systems above the minimum code requirements. The two main timber floor construction system approaches are either general, lightweight timber systems or massive timber systems. With lightweight, these are most economically delivered using prefabricated timber floor cassette panels, which can be manufactured off-site. Both lightweight floor cassettes and massive timber floor panels can be quickly and efficiently craned into place, providing a very rapid floor installation, which is also much safer for on-site workers, dramatically reducing working at height risks. The minimum NCC sound and fire requirements for floors are as follows. For class two and three residential buildings and class five office buildings, an airborne sound rating greater than 50 and an impact sound rating less than 62. And an FRL of 90, 90, 90 for class two and three residential buildings for both general and massive systems. And for class five office buildings, an FRL of 120, 120, 120 for both general and massive systems. Appropriate systems will require current test certificates demonstrating evidence of suitability which can be supplied by manufacturers for both fire resistance level, FRL, and acoustic performance. The DTS provisions for an FRL of 90, 90, 90 and RISF of 45 minutes stipulate the use of two layers of 16mm fire grade plasterboard. Looking at a basic floor system with a bare floor of 19 or 22mm particle board, then this would require the fire rated plasterboard ceiling to be fixed utilising resilient ceiling mounts and the inclusion of non-combustible acoustic insulation. Looking at the configuration shown here, you can see if no cavity acoustic insulation is used, then the system does not meet the minimum NCC airborne or impact requirements, so the system is not adequate. If R2 non-combustible insulation is utilised, however, you can see then that the system now meets the airborne requirement at 51, greater than 50, and impact requirement at 62, and is therefore adequate. It can also be noted here on the right hand side of the table that using a carpet or underlay over a bare floor significantly improves the impact sound performance. The system now achieving the lower value of 50, much reduced on 62. So in summary, for a bare timber floor the minimum requirement is the use of resilient ceiling mounts and at least R2 acoustic non-combustible insulation. When utilising a floor ceiling system using massive timber, it needs to be noted that these are proprietary systems and therefore FRL and acoustic performance information should be sought from the supplier. The NCC provides for minimum requirements and in most quality constructions, systems providing more superior performance will be desired. There are a range of ways that the acoustic and sound performance of floor ceiling systems can be improved. Firstly, increasing mass of the top layer of the floor system is one of the best ways to improve acoustic performance. It should be noted, however, that quantifying the improvement is quite difficult, as the acoustic requirements are aimed at improving the low frequency performance of the floor, a phenomena not measured by tested systems. The best design approach, therefore, is to design the base floor system to comply with the minimum NCC sound requirements, and then add additional floor mass. There are three common ways of doing this, either through additional floor sheets, a sand bed, or a concrete topping. Extra sheet flooring can be added, utilising standard timber or cement sheet flooring on an acoustic isolating mat. This mat is critically important to performance, as it isolates the overlying mass from the actual structure. A sand bed can also be utilised. The air spaces between the sand particles help to reduce the vibration and energy created by impact sound from footfall. For this method, it is recommended to use 45mm battens at 450 or 600mm centres depending on the thickness of the flooring used. Then a dry sand layer, or dry sand mixed with sawdust layer, is added between the battens and leveled just below the surface of the final floor sheet. The final floor sheet is then fixed in the normal manner. Final floor coverings such as overlay timber, feature flooring, carpet or tiles can then be placed on this floor sheet. A concrete topping slab might also be considered. These are generally 35 to 45 millimetres thick, laid over an isolating acoustic mat. It would be preferable if this could be done off-site, as part of a pre-fabricated floor cassette system, as pouring concrete on-site introduces a wet trade into an otherwise dry system, reducing construction efficiencies and adding time associated costs. Secondly, increasing the mass to the ceilings might be considered. This could include adding extra layers of material such as plasterboard to the sound rated ceiling system, or utilising a plenum below the ceiling. This is the recommended approach, as it both provides an improved acoustic performance 
as well as accommodating the installation of sprinklers and downlights and the running of services without breaching the fire rated ceiling. Upgrading the types of resilient ceiling mounts used might also be considered. Sound resilient ceiling mounts are not all the same. Different systems have different performance and investigation is recommended. Where possible, there are also acoustic benefits in running the floor joist parallel to the sound rated wall. This reduces the ability of impact sound from the floor being transferred across the wall to the adjoining SOU. So in summary, the minimum NCC requirements for floor ceiling systems are an airborne performance greater than 50 and an impact performance less than 62. The minimum system requirements with a bare timber floor are resilient mounts and at least R2 acoustic non-combustible insulation. Some ways to improve the sound performance of the floor ceiling systems include using carpet, this reduces impact noise, increasing the mass of the top floor layer using either extra sheet flooring, a sand bed or a concrete topping. These systems should also utilise an acoustic isolating mat to separate this additional mass from the structure. Utilising improved sound resilient ceiling mounts or if possible running floor joists parallel to the sound rated wall. For further information on wood and wood products, visit woodsolutions.com.au, the website for wood.